بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد if you lie to someone is it sufficient to ask forgiveness from Allah or must the person also be sought forgiveness and be told the truth even if it's a small lie um, when it comes to lies and lying about someone or speaking about someone how will that affect the relationship if I tell them? And that's something that's important and it's something that cannot be overlooked. Uh, if it is a lie that I told about some, someone and then I went and I told them and it could harm or damage the relationship permanently, then it's probably better not to share it with that person but to ask forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it's something that, that is small, then yes, go ahead. I mean, right, these are things that what's, what's going to happen is there's going to be definite loss of trust. But that loss of trust happened the moment I lied. I, I made an active decision to lie about this person or to that person. And it's very important for us to, to make sure that we, we come clean and we share these, um, these situations with others to make sure that the situation is clarified. But like I said, if sometimes if the relationship can become irreversibly damaged, then um, you have to weigh the potential harms and benefits and if that's something that needs to be shared or not. Uh, is it actually sunnah to cover the head? Uh, so sunnah is, is a general term uh, that has different meanings. If we say sunnah, that, is this something the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam regularly did? Yes. Uh, in, in that light, in that regard, it would be considered a sunnah. But there are sunnahs that are, there are types of sunnahs, right? So you have sunnah adiyah, right? And then you have sunnah sharia. So the sunnah and sharia are the things that he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did with a religious intent behind them. Uh, and what are some of those things? Like, for example, praying the sunnah of the prayers, uh, making, doing uh, dua, seeking istighfar, all of these different things would be considered sunan sharia sunan adiya his dress sallallahu alayhi wasallam the way he used to dress uh, he used to keep his hair covered right these would um, he sallallahu alayhi used to have a, a walking stick all of these would be considered customs that he sallallahu alayhi wasallam did uh, most of the madahib say that it is fine to follow these things because there there is a reward in doing iqtida bin nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam and you're doing it out of your love for him so the love is not in the action itself the love is not in covering the head the love is not in the way we're dressed the love is not in in holding the stick the love is because we love the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and this is a way that we express our love for him sallallahu alayhi wasallam uh, are you athari or ashari so these questions, when it comes to different polemic schools, the question then comes in is what, how do we define these schools? Uh, and there are different polemic schools within Islam and how we deal with them. This Basically, what do these schools answer? So if you talk about the, the Athari school, or you talk about the Ashari school, or you talk about the Maturidi school, what, have the, what do these schools do? What is their purpose? What is their goal? So if we look at the Madah Fiqhiyah, if we look at the Madah Fiqhiyah, what, what, do, what purpose do they serve? Basically, they are an interpretation of the Sharia. Uh, and there are different rules and there are different regulations and there are different uh, principles that they follow in order to arrive at a particular conclusion. But what is the purpose of these polemic schools? What is the purpose of these Aqadi schools? These Aqadi schools, what will they d discuss and what will they talk about? They talk about things like, how do I deal with the Qadr? What does that mean? What is Qadr? You know, and in the relationship of that divine pre-decree to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge. How do we deal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's characteristics? When we talk about that Allah Azza wa Jal, when we talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's self, how do I deal with the divine? Right? Th these are questions that are going to be answered in those things. Ghaybiyat in general. How do I deal with things that are ghaybi? How do I deal with those things that are, that are unseen? These are valid questions and they're valid research issues. But the question is, is like, okay, well, is this something that laymen need to know? Is it important for every single Muslim to understand the mechanics of Qadr? Is it important for everyone to understand the mechanics of the how of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Right? Th these are things that are beyond our comprehension, Aslan. So, delving into these things, I think it's fine. I don't, I don't have a problem with it, honestly. But these are issues that are going to be researched by people who are academics and people who enjoy that. Right? So, peop are there some people who enjoy researching these things? Yes. And I think that's healthy and I think that's great. But for the lay Muslims, this is not something that is healthy. Um, actually, Imam Ghazali, he said that the, if a lay, the lay people start delving into these issues, they usually end up differing. And, it, and we actually see that. This is something that is very clear. There's no doubt about that. If I want to bring the Muslims together, how do I bring the Muslims together? I call them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I call them to the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We invite the people to be honest. We invite the people to be upright. We invite the people to establish their prayer. We invite the people to, to pay their zakat and fulfill their obligations toward, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to one another. The moment we start talking about, okay, if I sat here and I said, okay, how do I understand Allah? This, who's, who's going to benefit from that discussion? I'm, I'm being very honest. 
or how do you understand qadr? How do you deal with it? How do I how do I mentally conceptualize this idea of qadr and this fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has pre existing knowledge? How does how do we deal with that and that us having free will? How do I reconcile that? Delving into these issues, even even Ibn Mas'ud he said, Ida dhukir al qadr fastamsiku. Like he said, whenever the qadr is mentioned, he's like, Don't don't talk about it too much. Don't don't delve into it. This is not something that helps bring iman. This is not something that helps bring light. And, and even if you look at these polemic schools, if you look at the, the Hanbali school, which is some people call the Athari school, if you look at the Ashari school or the Maturidi school, these were all reactionary schools. They're a reaction to what? They're a reaction to Greek uh, Hellenistic ideology, right? So there's a Greek concept of God. So for the Greeks, they said, okay, how do I, how do I understand God? And they come up with these logical points. So what happens? You have these different polemic schools. They said, okay, well, we need to answer them. So what do they do? They use the same paradigm to answer them. Who's benefiting? Who's benefiting? Like I said, these, these are academic discussions. These are not dini discussions. These aren't religious discussions. I don't see a lot of uh, benefit in them. And it's the same way. It's amazing, subhanAllah, the, 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 same, the same individuals who will champion and say, no, this is something that has to be taught. This is something that has to be enforced. They don't have the same zeal when it comes to the madhab fiqhi. It's strange. Like, you know, this, there's, there's a lot of hypocrisy in that. So if there's going to be zeal, like, no, I have to, this is the polemic school, and this is the method I need to call to. And it's amazing, if you look throughout our entire Islamic history, the scholars who we all accept and we all take from, they all ascribe to these different polemic schools. Some of them are Hanbali, some of them are Ashari, some of them are Maturidi. The better question is, why do you want to know? Right? I, I, I think that's a better question. Why is it that this, this is important? Is it important so that we can box certain people? And we can say, oh, okay, this is where he is. Now that I know where he is, I don't need to listen to him anymore. Or now that I know where he is, I should listen to him more. Al-haq wal haq The truth is always going to be the truth, regardless of who says it. And if, if anything is to be challenged, challenge the speech. Dismissing a person because of who he is, this is not the way to deal with it. Dismissing a person for what they say, they challenge what they're saying. Because even if you bring that person down, what he said is still going to continue on. <laughs> right? The ideas still perpetuate. Attack the idea. Attacking the person doesn't make any sense. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq.